In this section of the tutorial, which is the final section, we're going to finish all the sculpting of our model. The starting point for this is the file we saved at the end of the previous section, which is called 7 Portrait Sculpt 2.crv3d. If you've been following in sequence, you'll probably already be at this stage, or you'll need to load that file from the um, correct folder. So we can see we have a pretty good likeness at this point in time, but at this stage we need to do what I would refer to as the finesse sculpting. And this is where you carefully compare the original image with the model that you've created and just make all the very subtle changes that may need to be made in order to get it to look as good as it possibly can. Certainly if you're doing a portrait of a real person or trying to represent a particular person, this will be the point where you're really trying to get to the very subtle details that stop your model looking um, like a likeness and turn it into really getting the person and the character and the image popping out into the job. You also need to use this stage to fix anything which is obviously wrong. So that could be as subtle as coming down and if I look at the original image I can see that this part of the rough actually should be sticking out further. I've got areas here where I've got kind of an odd texture on the clothing where I want to clean that up and also if I've got any rough looking areas of texture from the um, component we created I may want to go in and do some subtle sculpting on there too. So most of what we're going to do here is just using the sculpting tools. In some cases though you may find that there's quite a significant change you need to make. For instance I may look at this and think to myself well I quite like the way the eyes work but they're quite sunken in. If I look at it from different angles I can see that the eyes sink quite deeply into the head. And it may be that although there's quite a sunken area on the original image, that's maybe a little bit too strong, so I may want to lessen that. So that may require me building extra additional shapes in the job. So what I might do is undraw this here, come to my drawing tab, just going to create an oval. And what I'm going to do is just position that oval in roughly the place where I want to... Um, raise the area up. I'll then do the same for the other eye. So I say this is very subtle and is not going to be much of a change for this and I could do it with the sculpting tools but sometimes if you're not sure how much you need to do then this is a good way to affect this change. So if I move that there and I'm happy with those shapes what I'm going to do is take both of these come to the modeling tab and we'll go ahead and tile the windows so we can see what's happening. And I'm going to create a round shape from the vectors. This time I'm just going to come up and do something like a 20 degree angle, no limit, and we'll call this eye modifications and hit apply. So they're very, very subtle domes that I've created there. But if I add them to what we've just created, we're going to see the lines where we where those things are raising up. Now I can take those and I can increase them their height by very small amounts and see the changes that that's going to make to the model. And we can see that's raising those areas up. But I don't want when I unselect them to see the area where they're um, the edge of those things. So what I would do is take them, go into the sculpting tools. And using the smooth, I'd switch off the preserve transparency option and just smooth the edges of those domes. And these need to be as smooth as I can make them coming into the modeling plane. So quite a high strength I've got set there. A lot of smoothing going in there. So I come around, keep hit OK and now I can't see the transition point where those go in back into the face because I've smoothed that area out and even though the 2D looks quite odd here if I take those areas and keep raising them up then I can make um, I can manipulate my shape so I may come to the component here and probably one of the easiest ways to see the difference is if we look at the model here and I just switch those off, you can see the change that makes to how deeply sunken the eyes are and then when we switch that on what 
although its very subtle and small shape has made quite a significant difference to our model. So again, I might take those two and take them and group them, rename that and call it something like uh, final plus i mods. And then I would take a duplicate of that in order to do my final set of sculpting on. So you can see, sometimes the changes will be done with the sculpting and will be subtle, which is what we're about to do, and sometimes they might be a little more significant and require you to actually build up a shape. So if we switch that off, take this one, go into the sculpting tools, it's going to tell me it needs to bake it. And really now, I'm at the very last stage where I'm going to go in and start to make any subtle changes that I want to make. Constantly, I want to be comparing these to the image, so I need to have the image printed out, as I've said many times, or have it on a, a second screen. Some of the things I might want to fix, the area under the nose here, I can see I had that shadow, and I can see I've got more of a, of a definition um, in this part under the nose than I have in the original image, so I may take the smudge tool, and just very gently come in and smudge that out and just lessen how strongly that is, um, how, 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 much, how pronounced that is. A lot of what I might do, if I turn the strength down there, it's a little strong, is coming in and just getting rid of any last final texture that I've still got from the original image um, in there if I don't want to see that on my model. You can see I'm just very, very subtly smoothing and smudging these different areas around the base of the lips. Same again, the chin here, and all the time comparing this to the image to make sure I'm either not getting rid of something that I like or not adding something which isn't there or accentuating something which is already strong enough. If you do too much and then you can't see what was there before, you can always come back to the undo. Just undo what you just did and go ahead and make changes again. So here we can see that I've got a little too much in the neck, so I'm going to use the remove. Just lessen that area there, come to the smudge smudge that in and take the top of the clothes and just smudge down that rough and all this area here to blend this in and again just getting rid of any texture I don't want any shapes that I don't want accentuating areas or blending them in to get the uh, look that I'm aiming for I mentioned this area of the rough earlier on I might want to build that up because that's a much higher part of the model than it is in the version that I currently have. And again, you're always going to add shapes and then use the smudge in order to get that to blend. And again, referring back to the original image, you can see how the shape is supposed to work with those that are around it. So once more, this could be quite a time-consuming stage. This literally could take several hours on its own because you'll find that sometimes it's a very subtle, small changes that make a big difference into how the part looks. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this. I'm going to do all the rest of my sculpting that I need to do and then we'll continue so you can see what that point looks like and just summarise what we've done in this tutorial. So I'll go ahead and hit pause now. So now we've jumped ahead in time again, you can see uh, an iteration of this finesse sculpting. There's almost no end to this process uh, in some ways because you can constantly find tiny little things that you can keep tweaking and tweaking. So it's really just getting it to the point where you're happy with the way it looks, that you think your client is going to be happy with the way it looks. And um, if you're not, just to keep making subtle changes 
it can quite often help to go away from the subject uh, either to leave it overnight or to have a break and do something else for a few hours and then to come back to it and to relook at the image and relook at the model that you've got and to continue to do this comparison and to tweak and subtly change anything that you don't think is quite right until you're happy with the way it looks. So here you can see uh, we have my final version of the George Washington portrait quite happy with this. I'm going to go ahead and say file, save as, and we'll save this, call it 8portraitfinal.crv3d. So that'll be the endpoint of the uh, tutorials in terms of the actual work we're doing in the software. Just to uh, briefly summarize some of the steps we've taken to this point, if you remember, uh, or if you've been following along in order, then way back we started with our image and we loaded it, sized it and got a rough texture from it just to see that it was going to work for us. Then we had the long process of building up all the vectors and we did those in effectively in layers that represented some of the shapes that we were going to build such as the base face shapes, the detailed face shapes and then through all the different components that represent specific objects such as the nose, the eyes, the mouth, the hair, the clothes. From there we had two tutorials where we essentially covered the basic shape creation um, and that was taking each of those individual vectors and starting to build the components we were looking for, not really worrying too much about how they related to each other but just getting the definition of the size and approximate depth and shape that we were after. After we'd done that for both the face, the hair and the clothes, we then went into a stage where we individually edited each of those components. So we worked our way through the components. We changed the way that they related to each other in the list. So we manipulated things like the combine mode and the order in the list. And we went ahead and individually took them and started to do sculpting within them to smooth some of the pieces uh, or to smooth some of those components, to smudge some of those components and just generally start to edit it so that we had quite a rough looking model at the end of that stage. From there we went into the what I would call the final sculpting stage where we took and started to combine components together in order to build um, the final shapes that we're looking for and really that involved getting all the components again making sure they were in order and that the hair overlapped in the right places, creating that as a single component, making a duplicate of it and starting to do the sculpting. Also as part of that process we took our texture model which was generated from the image and creating a component from the image. We did a lot of sculpting on that texture model. We accentuated things like the hair and parts of the clothing and we smoothed out any of the texture that we didn't want but tried to leave in some of the subtle details that are part of that model. We then combined the two and we got to the stage that we started at in this particular tutorial. Here I've showed you how we can take and make some quite significant changes in subtle ways where we took the eyes and decided they were too sunken and so we built them up using some domes which would smooth into the background. We then took that final stage there and just started to do lots and lots of small little changes to the model, to the sculpting and just working, comparing the image with our model and continuing to make changes as and where we thought they were appropriate. That ultimately ends up at the stage we're at here. So hopefully if you've watched all these tutorials what you'll get from them is the fact that this is not an easy process but also that there's quite a, a straightforward um, set of steps which will lead you to a reasonable conclusion and a reasonable quality model. It isn't quick, it is time consuming, you do have to draw good vectors, you do have to create the sort of the right shapes you need and all that is going to take time and then of course you'll see that the sculpting in a project like this is incredibly important and so you are going to have to take your time with the sculpting and if you're not very familiar with it it's going to be a great way to practice but it is going to take you longer to achieve um, the look that you're after in the particular model you're working on. So that concludes this tutorial. This will be followed by a summary um, where we look at some of the shapes that weren't involved in this that you may come across in other portraits such as the glasses, some more information about hair and other things that we weren't able to cover in this particular project.